artists really care about being part of national recovery, and I want to tell you why that's a good thing. Most recovery plans start with jobs, because jobs are the engine of prosperity. You give people a salary, and they pay their rent and buy groceries, and that puts money into circulation, starting the flow that can restore the economy. It doesn't really matter what the jobs are. A nurse, a teacher, a construction worker, somebody who works in green energy, or an artist. It all helps. The reason why artist jobs are such a good investment, though, is because they can help all of our other national objectives for recovery to be realized. We know every day that how people feel about the economy and recovery is just as important as the facts and figures. If people don't feel new confidence and hope, nothing's going to work. And artists are engineers of the imagination. They can help us imagine what the new economy will look like, the society we want to be building, the ways we want to be inclusive and creative. All of these things can be imagined and enacted in art through theater, through dance, through film, through music, through visual arts like murals or photography projects. We can use all of these tools to unearth our feelings and work with them to prepare ourselves to surmount the crisis. We can use them for cultural recovery. Culture is the fabric that binds us together, the things we eat and wear, the customs that we observe, how we're connected to our heritage. Cultural recovery means creating the kinds of communities that we want. Artists can help through public works of art that say that everybody's history was part of building this country and everybody's social imagination is going to be part of moving it forward. For countless years, artists have done incredible theater work for instance, where two groups in a neighborhood are at odds, with the help of artists, they find a way to share their stories, to hold their stories as the sacred things they really are, to see each other as fully human. And after that, they find it very hard to hate each other. Working for cultural recovery, artists place their gifts at the service and the, of the development of our schools, our social institutions, and our communities, and at the service of communication between us regardless of our differences, and at the service of a feeling that we all belong. We're not going to get that feeling of alignment with national purpose, that sense of possibility, without artists. Sustainable recovery demands cultural recovery. We know we can do it because it's been done before. Back in the 1930s, when the Great Depression happened, some of the first programs under the WPA, the Works Progress Administration, were programs for artists called Federal One. There were programs putting visual artists, musicians, theater people, writers, all kinds of artists to work as part of national recovery. There was the Federal Theater and the Living Newspaper, bringing the headlines to life. All those murals on post offices, all those public works that have endured since that time. When those programs started, artists were just an unemployed group hit hard by the Depression. The government was just putting one more group in the economy to work, artists as opposed to builders, as opposed to farmers. But once they started creating artist jobs, in public service they saw that a lot of other things could be accomplished with the same investment. Artists inspired people, they made the news real, they created sites of public memory, they helped to direct our national social imagination toward what it was like to recover from that Great Depression. At their height, 40,000 artists were put to work under the WPA, Federal One of the New Deal. Back in the 1970s, public service employment programs were again created to address high unemployment. CETA was the biggest one, the Comprehensive Employment and Training Act. Those jobs programs weren't created for artists either, but artists took advantage of them. They said, we want to have a role in healing what's happening in this country right now and we have a way to work as public servants, creating murals, doing community circuses, doing community gardens, offering workshops for kids, sharing our skills in senior centers, in hospitals, in prisons. At its height, $200 million in CETA funds were allocated for artist jobs. So we've had these two examples in history that teach us that artists are shovel ready and what I'm hearing from people around the country now is that they're completely shovel ready again and they're just waiting for that to be noticed. The arguments for putting artists to work in recovery are so strong. 
Why haven't they succeeded in a big way? When the stimulus bill was debated early in 2009, one of the most controversial things in it was one of the smallest, $50 million for the National Endowment for the Arts. For decades, people who oppose all kinds of social spending have used the arts as a club to beat the whole thing to death with. Usually they try to drum up big outrage over taxpayer money being spent on controversial art, and the taint of that is really stuck. So when the stimulus bill came around, members of Congress who opposed social spending thought, aha, here we have that weapon again. But opposition rose up and they failed. But even succeeding in getting $50 million into the stimulus bill only freed up a few cents for each person. Now we need to really put artists to work in schools, in communities, in hospitals, in prisons, in all the ways that I've described joining economic recovery to cultural recovery. Look around your own community. What needs cultural recovery? What would it take for your neighbors to see the value of putting artists to work as part of our national recovery? What are you prepared to do to make that happen?